Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at financial data with uh, Python. Let's get started. So while I'm waiting for this, I'll, I'll do a little bit of um, some discussion on this. So again, we have our standard imports, pandas as pd, numpy as mp, seaborn as sns, matplotlib, pyplot as plt, and then again, our matplotlib inline. We need to pip install yfinance. Uh, yfinance is a API for um, Yahoo Finance. Um, the usual one that we use, people use now is also Pandas Data Reader, but it does, it's a little bit finicky. Um, recently I've been using more of um, this yfinance. It has some eccentricities that we'll, we'll talk about um, shortly. And then also then at the end of this, once it has successfully installed in here, uh, make sure and do uh, import Y finance as YF, and then um, we'll get started on the rest. So next thing we're gonna do is just do a basic example. Okay, I'm gonna actually take this just from the GitHub page. Um, and so, uh, and then we will, from there, we'll actually do um, a really complex, more complex example. We'll even uh, grab some and do some data cleaning as well. So let's go from the basic example. So we've already imported uh, Y finance as YH. So let's do uh, Microsoft and we can do YF dot ticker. And so this does expect that you know uh, ticker symbols and how to do that. Um, check your old finance classes, et cetera, for that. So MSFT, we run that. And this gives us a, a ticker object. So if we can do MSFT dot info, here we can look and it will grab all kinds of stuff and so you can see that this is actually in a dictionary so we have all kinds of um, static data that we can get so for example what currency it's in what uh, United States it's in if if that has information on the company officers uh, day highs lows again all kinds of stuff even for example the logo of the company um, legal business names short changes uh, a zip code where they're located it gives us all kinds of information from that now we can also go through and grab um, historical data as well I'm gonna yeah let me just go and go to another line and so we can do something like grab the history and do mass f t dot history here and then we want our period to be and again you can grab um, any period so for example one month you can get uh, the interval as a day or anything else but what we're gonna do is do period max okay and again the standard in here is going to be the interval is daily so I'm going to run this and we can take a look at history and I probably shouldn't have typed it out as hist because I wound up uh, this may cause us some problems later on but you can see this is the type of historical data that it does and this this particular Yahoo data goes all the way back to eight uh, March of 86 and this does daily all the way up it gives us information on dividends stock splits everything else through the whole historical time which is great now what we can actually do um, well let's let's go back and here we just have the historical data all of the historical data but let's go back to uh, this um, information here so MSFT and we want to look at actions now actions in this instance are the dividends dividends or stock splits okay so it would be these rows here so if we run this, hmm, oh, whoops, it's actions, actions, not action. And so notice it just grabs those two, uh, those two locations. And again, it's not, we won't see it in here because it's truncated there. Um, so we can actually just grab just the actions, just the dividends and the splits as we want to. And again, notice it has here, there are stock splits on this day there were stock splits in the 90s so again it, it, it'll it, it doesn't have it won't be continuous at all okay it just gives you that day you can also go and if you just want for example just want the dividends you can grab just the dividends okay you can also go through and if you want um, we can also go in and grab just the splits as well now we can also grab very cool stuff. Okay, so msft.financials. Again, this one doesn't have anything, but we can also, let's see if it has any of the financial, the quarterlies. Uh, let's do quarterly financials for now. 
nothing. Okay, so let's see what else we have. Uh, let's see if we have any information on major holders. So here you can actually see, for example, all the information about the uh, shareholders, okay? Um, which is uh, fairly cool. We can also grab, for example, if there's any institutional shareholders. So um, institutional holders. So here you can actually see all companies that actually hold, um, and again, these are major uh, in industries or institutions that actually hold on to their stock, which is kind of cool as well. So again, here you can see the number one shareholder is Vanguard with, uh, let's see, 100,000, so 614 million shares, something like that, which is fantastic. Um, we can also grab, for example, their balance sheets. Uh, and again, this doesn't have anything. Let's see about, let's do cash flow. See if there's cash flow. No information on cash flows. Um, let's see if there's information on their earnings. Nothing on earnings. But again, I'm just showing you guys kind of just information that you could potentially grab. Uh, some, some places have it, some don't. So let's look if they have a, yep, now look here, they have data on their sustainability. Okay, um, so again, it's kind of interesting to see what type of information you can get from here. Um, I will let you guys kind of look at that and peruse at your, uh, by yourself. Uh, let's also look at what, recommendations? Recommendations here, so what firms uh, uh, want to, uh, say what you should do with it. So for example, to grade, so they say that it's buy, some say that it's a long-term buy, some say that it's overweight. Um, and so we can actually even from here, um, we could do something like, let me actually grab this. I'm curious as to what everything has in to grade. So we can say we want to grade and then we want value counts here. And so we can actually look and say, all right, um, out of out of 315 uh, rows, and again, this has this has. Remember, this is also time series, okay? So we may want to group it by year or something like that, and then do it. But anyways, 90 say buy, 67 say overweight, and so again, you have you have all kinds of information on here on how people actually uh, ha whether they recommend to buy the company stock or not, which is fantastic if you want to uh, use this for um, financial analysis or even um, um, like if you're a certified financial planner, this type of information is priceless to you. Uh, so let's also look at what else. Um, let's look and see if they have uh, their calendar. This is their earnings reports, okay, which is nice. So earnings uh, date, earnings average, their lows, their highs, all of this information. Um, and then we can also see what stock exchanges they're available in. So let's do is in and here. And again, so this is telling us uh, it's this is their um, international securities identification code. So it's the ISIN. And then let's see if there are um, any options. Okay, and so these are their uh, uh, get options. Um, and their expirations. So this is this is great for again doing a deep dive into a single company. Um, but I I personally um, a lot of times I like to do kind of more large scale analysis. So let's actually go through this is this again this is just the basics. Um, we can always go through and plot these as well. So we have um, uh, we have that history data. We can do plot. On top of this, kind is equal to line, um, and let's see, uh, let's do fig size, uh, and we want this to be a 12 by 12. So notice this this looks this just looks like nonsense right now, okay? Because again, it has uh, predominantly the volume. So what we can do in here is do uh, subplots is equal to true. And this will subplot out everything. And I should have put in colon in here. Here we go. And again, notice that this is this is the whole 
time. So again, if you're wanting to look at basic financial crises or anything else, it's better to probably cut it up into the time periods that you want. Um, and we can we can talk about that um, another time on how to do high levels of uh, financial transaction data and looking deeper into time series analysis. Uh, but I'd like to go through a little bit more of an advanced example, something something more fun. At least, well, I guess, I don't know, some people may think that this is a drag, but I personally think it's fun. And why? I want, huh. Hold on. All right, that that was a weird um, fake out. All right, so let's, let's talk about advanced uh, uh, financial data. Um, what importation or gathering maybe okay so um a couple things that we can look at okay so this this was a single company i have a tendency to like to look at uh the major indices okay so uh uh so major financial indices uh, major indices now how would you know what the financial indices are? If again, if you're a layperson, you may have your own idea, um, some advanced uh, directives as well. But let me let me go here, and I actually have a web page saved, so we can have a little bit of fun with this. Okay, so here are all the major uh, tickers in the world. This is on Yahoo Finance. Okay, so here's all of the symbols for all the major. Um, tickers and indices of the world, world indices. Now, we're going to use this, okay? Because maybe let's say that this website updates from time to time. Maybe rankings change or something. So I want to use this as my kind of go-to web page. Now, some of this, uh, some of these indices have historical data saved in Yahoo. Some do not, and that's okay. All right, um, but we're going to use this as our kind of go-to. Now. I'm lazy, okay? I really, really, really dislike having to um, uh, type things out. So we're going to actually scrape from this website, okay? So what we're gonna do is do um, major indices, all right? And then here we're gonna do pd.readhtml, and we're going to grab that whole data set and I only want the first data set, okay, the first table. So then if we look at major indices, take head on here, notice we actually have that data that was shown there. Now again, it's gonna have NAs for some of those because they had um, um, interactive graphic images inside there. And again, um, we don't actually want those, so it's good anyways. And technically, all of this other data is useless to us. I wanna grab, the ticker symbols, okay? And so we're going to grab those and we're going to create our tickers. Now, first, let's do, um, we have our major indices here. We want to grab the symbols, or the symbol list. So let's take a look at it. Great, so we have the symbol series. Now, this is not in a format that is standard, okay? There's this um, caret at the side there and we need to also lower it. And then we also want to maybe make it to a list. So first off, let's do string dot replace here, and we want to grab the caret, okay? And then we want to uh, overwrite that with nothing. So we just have a, a nothing in there, just quotes, that's it. And so if I show you guys this now, notice we got rid of that caret symbol. Now from the caret symbol, we want to do stir dot lower. Notice now everything is nice and lowercase. And then we also want to do to list. And this gets us this nice list of all of the potential major indices of the world. So we're going to call this whole list here, uh, ticker list. Now, another thing is that um, the, the way that in which this ticker list can be used is a uh, kind of varies okay so if we do something like y f 
dot tickers. Now notice there is a ticker. So that's if you use a single item and then there is tickers. Okay, so if we grab just the tickers and then we throw in here our ticker list and we run this, okay, we get, uh, well, we need to actually do this. We need to do uh, something like ticker data. Okay, and if we look at um, the ticker data, ticker data here, we actually have a bunch of objects and it's giving us some errors, okay? Now, this is, this is actually their standard way that they want you to use this data set, okay, in, um, on their GitHub page. I personally am going to delete it because it doesn't work very well sometimes, okay? It gives you back a lot of errors. What we want to do is go through and do something like uh, df is equal to yf.download and then we have our ticker list and then we have the period in here and I'm going to write everything out explicitly. I want it daily, so one day. I want a start date in here and um, because I don't want everything, I'm going to do um, 2020 uh, January um, of 13. Okay, and because this, this actually I'm having this um, match up with um, some research that I'm doing on COVID-19 and financial markets. And so this is this is my data set for COVID-19 starts in um, January um, of this uh, of that last year. And so then we also want an end date in here of 2021. Uh, and today is gonna be March, uh, I believe 10th. Let me see. Yes, we're March 10th today. And so then I'm going to run this. Now we will be getting some errors in here. Don't worry about that because there are some data on, on there that have been delisted, okay? So that data is not available to us. Now we can look at the size of our ticker list here and we can do a uh, length of our, our ticker list. So you can see how many there were. There were 39. Now notice 29 failed downloads, okay? That's fine, it just means that that particular data didn't have a lot of historical data or maybe it's been delisted for some uh, reason. Okay, don't worry. Again, it gives you a list of what didn't work, but I'm interested in what did work. Okay, so let's actually take a look at our data frame now. And notice it's a big one, okay? Um, it has our adjusted close, it has um, our close, it has open, it has all different items. So we can also take a look here at dot columns. So notice here, what's actually happening is that these are, this is a multi-index of columns. So it has, for every adjusted close, it has, for example, uh, this here is um, the Shanghai Stock Index. This is the Shenzhen, okay? Uh, these are Chinese stock indices. And it has this for all of the data, okay? The adjusted close all the way to the volume. So you can keep it all, or you can grab only what you need, okay? For for all the intensive purposes today, I want to keep the adjusted close. So I'm just gonna call this adjusted close, uh, close here, and I'm going to do, um, also, if you notice here, if we look at the data really quickly, There's a lot of NAs, okay? There's a lot of missing data because some, some uh, depending on the time of year and the location, uh, they will have some missing data. So we need to set up something to clean this data up a little bit, okay? So there's a lot of NAs, so then maybe we'll give it a threshold, okay? So let's do um, uh, df.dropNA, and we're going to give it a threshold here of, um, I'll give it 10. Okay, and so this threshold here actually guides us on how to uh, clean up. So again, it's how many non-NA values are required. So again, we need at least 10 non-NA values in a column in order for us to uh, keep the data. So notice this is actually currently, it's taught with axis is equal to zero as a standard. So we'll do axis is equal to one for our columns. And then we also want to grab the adjusted close for each of them. And we also want to 
drop and partially it's part of this is because I know uh, this uh, um, XAX axis is equal to one uh, simply because it doesn't it's not useful data to us okay it's very very um, you know what, let me keep it and then I can show you guys why we dropped it here in a second so now if we look here we have adjusted close and let me look at the head now notice here we do have some missing days okay so we have um, and again uh, so Shanghai stock index Shenzhen um, Dow Jones Industrial Average um, Shanghai this is for Mexico I and I do not remember what these two are I'm sorry um, and but we can always go back and talk about them so now let's do just a little bit of plotting adjusted close dot plot and remember um, I'm gonna actually do subplots in here because they're they're on um, actually let's do this dot describe dot t and so here we can see that they're on kind of wildly different scales for the minimums and their maximums so again if we plot this all together for example we'll see this uh, we'll see like the Dow and Jones or something like that and we'll see some of these others like this uh, Shenzhen but the problem being the problem being is that this is not going to work very well because they're on different scales okay so and you know what let me just go in and show you what I mean if I just do dot plot notice um, and let me let me do something bigger fig size we'll do a 12 by 12 so notice all right so we have two up here we have some down here we have some down here now these almost look flat right we don't see any variation in them whatsoever that's not useful to us so we want to go through and grab uh, subplots is equal to true and so now we actually see this now we can see here that this XAX it stops after uh, 202005 it stops we have no data so it's useless to us so I'm gonna go back up well actually I'll do it here and just put in a note uh, will drop XAX due to lack of um, viable data so we'll do something like ADJ close and we're just gonna override it so ADJ close dot drop here XA X uh, access is equal to one so now when if we look at our adjusted close in here we can do um, plot um, and what do we want here fig size here and we'll do a 12 by 12 um, you know what let's do a 12 by 20 uh, so it will take up more of the page and then we'll also do uh, subplots it's true oops and I need to put that in there so now that didn't come out the way I wanted it to you rerun it okay so now we can see that we have relatively clear data now there are some uh, missing uh, items in here we can take care of that in um, a variety of different ways but uh, let's um, look here and see what we can can see though again everything has this dip again this is this is uh, pre COVID uh, or starting at COVID and again we can see how everything dropped things are starting to look better but then again they kind of waver again we have these um these dips and jumps all over the place so maybe the next thing we would want to do is maybe clean up the data we'd want to do some other visualizations um, later on we can even merge this with our COVID-19 data that we've looked at in the past and uh, do some sort of um, analysis okay so we can let's let's talk about some other things here um, now I have just this subset of data but one thing that we do like to do is resample our data okay so uh, for example 
you you maybe have this data and let's say that you want it like maybe every four months or something like that so you can do um, and you know what let's grab let me grab just a single index um, for now so we'll do the Dow don't Jones um, and do adjusted close and we want um, DJI so now DJI we can take it DJI we can take a look now one thing that we can do here is dot resample and so you want this as maybe um, well quarterly so okay so every four months and you want the mean for those every four months so this will give us the uh, mean the quarterly means for this data set every four months now again this may not because again right now I'm just resampling it and doing the calculation um, but what you would probably want to do for example is change um, change the variation so for example you you want to make sure that everything lines up in the right way you can't just say oh give me get me um, the quarterly data starting today well you can we can calculate it just like we did but you need to have it actually set up with the proper quarterly earnings reports that type of stuff so you'd have to make sure that your data lines up but you can just run it just like this um, we also have a couple other things that we could do so for example we could um, we can do maybe what do we want to do we can do the daily percentage change okay so we can actually create a new um, let me just create a new variable all right DJI uh, percent change let's just do P change per change okay and so this would be something like this we have and I'm gonna do this just with the adjusted daily close so DJ DJI here divided by our DJI and then we want to shift the data by one okay and so maybe how how's the best way to show you guys this hold on so we can do something like PD dot no you know what um, DJI dot merge and do DJI dot shift one this should do it no nope. Oh, because it's a series. Um, let me do PD dot concat here, and then we do um, DJI. Whoops. DJI shift. No, nope, that's not going to work either. All right. So PD dot data frame. And then we have here, um, you know what, it's fine. Let me just do DJ, DJI. I can show you guys here. So this is the, the first, this is our normal data set. Now if I grab DJI shift one, it's going to shift everything down one, okay? And so this is, we're able to do, um, uh, differences we're able to do um, all kinds of other mathematical uh, representations so for example just like doing the percentage change um, so and that's actually what we're going to do here so we have DJI and we'd want to do minus one in here and I'm going to wrap this okay so we can do DJI percent change and so we can also do dot plot uh, Figure size here, we'll do uh, 12 by 6. So here you can see this is this is the difference is the daily percent change, okay? So over time, you can talk about uh, volatility of a market. Okay, so again, COVID started out, there wasn't bad, and then we kind of had this panic, and then it started to kind of become calm again. Okay, as you can see, again, there's some, some major dips here and there, but overall, the market kind of regulated itself 
to be more calm to this new phenomenon. Um, so, and that's that's the best usage of shift. Now, another thing that you can do again, this is this is the percent change, okay? But if we want to calculate up um, the returns for each day, let's do the log returns, and uh, we'll call this shift here. Um, uh, again, this would uh, this would be basically um, again. I don't know how many of you have taken um, finance or anything, but let's say that you want to calculate up um, your rate of return. Okay, so R T is equal to P T divided by P T minus one minus one. Okay, so this is this is your normal uh, your normal rate of return here. Um, so, and this is for example, where P is the daily price of today. Uh, P T minus one is the daily price of yesterday. Okay, and then R is the rate of return. So let's go on and actually calculate that up. Um, so we could do something like um, NP dot log. And again, we're doing the log of the returns. So um, we want DJ I divided by DJ I dot shift one. Run this, and again, this is this is why again it's getting rid of the log force, and then now we can actually take a look at the daily log returns. Um, and so I'm going to just grab that, put that there, change this out to log return shift. Run this, and again, notice. They look almost identical. Um, this um, you do have a little bit, slightly less volatility uh, when we utilize the log. So let's actually look at um, something that's relatively important. Okay, and that's looking at the histograms. So if we do this, DJI dot um, hist. Let's do bins uh, is bins is equal to fifty. Now this is on the normal data. The normal data. Notice there is. There is heavy skew to this data set. Okay, um, let's do. I'm gonna copy that fig size. Keep using it a lot. And actually, I'll do uh, to 12. So again, you can see here that there's major skew. Now, this is a no-no whenever you're trying to do some financial. Uh, uh, predictions, that type of stuff. We want the data to be regularized over time. So that's why we would grab, here I'm gonna just grab this whole thing so it'll be copied over, but we do the percent change or we do the differences. And we'll do, I'll do it on the log shift returns. Notice here everything's kind of squished up, okay? Um, and again that's because it has, it's it's been slightly normalized, but let's also do this on what did I call that? Uh, the percent change as well, so you guys can see this as well. So notice they're they're almost identical. Okay, it has been it has been squished a little bit. Okay, um, so this is this is just something that you guys can take into account. This is how you can normalize data, how you can clean the data, um, how you can look at your daily returns on the data. Um, we can even do. Um, something like uh, cum uh, cumulative distributions, a cumulative daily returns, um, that type of stuff as well. Now, let me see what else I have that we can do something that's kind of cool. Thank you everyone for watching. If you like this, please comment, subscribe, and click that like button. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.